Welcome to our tutorial about creating and saving a new project. In this tutorial, we'll be learning how to create a new project, how to save it, then close it and open it again later. A project is how Cubase refers to its software-specific file format. The project file coordinates all the parts of your recording and also contains some information needed to recreate the work, like the MIDI data, edits, mixing, effect setting, etc. But the project doesn't actually store the audio or video files themselves. These are stored in separate folders on your hard drive as audio or video files, etc. The file extension for a Cubase project is .cpr. When you launch Cubase, the Cubase Open Document dialog window opens. Before you start recording, you need to open a project or create a new one. Let's choose New Project. The New Project dialog window opens. Here are a number of available templates that we can choose from. Let's cancel out of this dialog window for now. You can also create a new project by selecting New Project from the File menu on your PC, the Cubase menu on your Mac, same place. The keyboard shortcut for that is Control or Command N. We'll be learning how to create and use templates later on in this course. For now, let's work with an empty template and click OK. The Set Project Folder dialog window opens. Cubase now prompts us to create a folder on our hard drive so that the project file and all of its related files are stored in one safe place. It's very important that every project have its own unique folder. If you store many projects in one folder, it gets really confusing pretty quickly. You also run the risk of writing over files and erasing files by accident when you try to clean up one project. Take some time beforehand to figure out how you'll be organizing your audio projects because they get big fast. Now we navigate to where we want the project to be created and stored. We're not saving the project at this point. We're just creating a folder on the hard drive that our project will be saved in later on. If you haven't already set up a special folder for your new project, you can click Make New Folder and this will create a new folder for your project. I'm going to need a new folder. Let's click on Make New Folder. And we'll call it New Album Brainstorming. Press Enter to accept the name. Remember, give the folder a unique name that'll let you easily identify it at a glance later on. The name should be different than any other Cubase project you've created before. Click OK to create. And congratulations, we've just created our first project. Let's maximize the project window within my Cubase screen. Notice how at the top of the window, the project is called Untitled 1. And that's because we haven't saved it yet. So before you do anything else, I recommend that you now save your project. Let's click Save from the File menu. Notice the shortcut, Control S, you'll know this already. We'll be using this frequently while we record. Let's choose a destination. Cubase has already navigated to the folder we created a moment ago. And this is where we're going to save our project. See how Cubase has created a folder where it will store audio files. Let's type a name for my project. I'll give it the date, let's say November 2010 V1. And click Save. Our new name now appears in the title bar. Let's open my new project folder. Here's the project I just created. And here's the audio folder where Cubase will automatically store my recorded audio input as media files. Let's close Windows Explorer. As you continue to edit your project, you'll want to save as and use another file name. For example, let's say V2. This will close the first version and leave V2 open for our editing. The Save As command is how you create organized backups of different versions of your projects over time. Save As lets you go back to a previous version if you need to. Good project version control is really important. To close a project, first select the project window. 
That's the main window that we're working in here. And then select Close from the File or Cubase menu. The keyboard shortcut to close your document is Control or Command W. You can also simply click the X in the upper right corner. We haven't made any changes, so we're not prompted to save them. To open a project, you can go to the File menu or Cubase, Open, navigate to the folder where your project is stored. Cubase by default takes you to the last project folder you had open. Let's cancel out of the Open Project window. However, it's often faster to use the Recent Project submenu. We go to File and Recent Projects. Cubase remembers recently opened projects and lists them here. We choose the project we want by clicking on it once. If you've moved your project file since the last time it was open, you won't be able to locate it via the shortcut in the Recent Projects option. You'll have to do a standard Open command. Control or Command O is the keyboard shortcut. Just a few more tips on managing your projects. When you open a project file, it looks for the media files, audio and video, where you left them. If you change the media's location between your saves, Cubase will prompt you for the new location before loading them into your project. If you delete a folder containing media files without backing them up beforehand, you won't be able to use that audio or other media in your project. It's no longer available to the project file. Cubase will warn you that it can't load the files referred to in the project. I want to be sure that you understand the relationship between the project file and the media files and to handle your media files with caution. It's a good idea to back up your work frequently on an external hard drive as well. Here are some media files for a project and if I delete these by accident in Windows Explorer, Cubase can't help me solve this problem. And this concludes our tutorial on creating and saving a new project.